Hey guys, and welcome back to AJ Education YouTube channel. Uh, today's video is um, a very special, very exciting video for me, and we have a very special guest uh, called Niels. And Niels, uh, like myself, did uh, material science at, uh, at Oxford. And also, uh, a step further, Niels also did material science at Queen's, which is my college. So, we, you know, we, we share that special bond. So, Niels, uh, thanks so much for joining. Great to have you with us today. Yeah, thanks, Sonny. Um, yeah, so we were a couple of years apart. Uh, we have the same tutor, same experience, well, slightly different experiences. Uh, but yeah, it's a small group of us in the world that have done materials at Queen's. Yeah, no, no. Uh, how, many, um, how many materials people at Queen's were when you, were, uh, when you went undergrad? Uh, in my year, there were four. Uh, so four in my college. Um, and overall, there are about 30. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's about right. In this video, we're talking about how to get into Oxford University for material science. Um, and... Um, uh, Niels, uh, as a graduate uh, of material science, will share his insights and his ex uh, experience and expertise in, in how to get in. Um, so without further ado, let's go. Okay, Niels, so jumping straight into it. First of all, what is material science, right? Because it's not a subject that's, that's often on the radar of pretty much well, anyone. So, um, I mean, how did, how did you find it? How did you get into it? So this is probably one of the trickiest things with applying to materials because you don't get a pamphlet that says, this is material science. And the way I found it was I was going through the course for natural sciences at Cambridge. And I was looking at the individual modules seeing, do I, what do I really want to study? And I came across material science, which is a really interdisciplinary subject. It's got a bit of physics, a lot of maths, a bit of chemistry, a bit of engineering, a bit of design. Um, and that really appealed to me because I knew I didn't want to do straight chemistry or straight physics. Wasn't super drawn towards engineering just because I wasn't quite sure. But materials is a really nice balance between all of that. And it's what kind of excited me is that it's really new. It's a really, really new subject. It's right at the cutting edge of technology. And when you actually realise what material science is, it's everywhere around us. It's all the materials from what your phone screen's made of to... Um, what's inside your light bulb to what's literally all around you and the way I tend to describe materials is um, it's what what the materials that we use around us and why we use them on a broad scale so from the microstructure all the way up to the macrostructure of how we define our materials so it's all about that development of different size and scale of materials. Oh, that's that's really good. I mean, uh, I'm, I might steal that definition because people ask me all the times, like, what is material science? And the one I give them is, um, look, basically, we we look at um, materials on a you know micro, sometimes molecular structure from wood, glass, plastics, clothing, cars, planes, uh, and and what I then say is, look, we you know we play around with that structure to uh, enhance the properties, so make them lighter, stronger, stiffer, more durable, energy efficient, you know, whatever. So, um, no, go guys, it is super exciting space and uh, the course is definitely not, not easy, whether that's at Oxford or at you know, any other university and the good ones are Imperial, Birmingham, Sheffield, I think Manchester does, does mm -hmm. um, Queen Mary, I don't know, did I miss any, did I miss any obvious ones? They're the ones that I, that I applied to. Yeah, um, it's kind of like the same 200 people who go in all the open days and, and, and apply everywhere. Uh, so you you know you do get to know everyone um okay so anyways you so let's say you're watching this okay i've decided you've convinced me material science is for me um how do you how do you apply to oxford so what you know what are the deadlines what are the parts of the application how do you go about it okay so um we've got the ucas deadline um for oxford which is slightly earlier than all of them so really make sure that you're on on top of when it is i think this year was 14th of October, October, correct me if I'm wrong on that. Yeah, 15th of October is normally, yeah. 15th of October. Um, so you need to make sure that you've um, got that application in by then because it's way earlier than all the others. Um, and to apply, you just go through the UCAS. Uh, you have to choose a college. Um, so with uh, materials, there are only seven colleges that offer it. Um, you can also apply for an open application, which means they randomly allocate you. But one of the good things about um, choosing a college is that because materials is quite a small subject, they do pass around applicants. So I would say don't stress massively about a college because you can apply to one, 
you don't get enough from them and you get enough from another one. So it can be that way around. I literally went off Queens to choose it. I looked up, I, I sort of, I looked up um, a forum that said, oh, uh, Queens has great food. And I said, great, that'll do for me. I mean, you can go into looking at the academics and getting your heart set. But the thing is, as I say, you can get put another one. So it's not a huge stress to try and choose which one. Yeah, and 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 I, I definitely second that. Queens does have, you know, probably the best food, definitely the best lunch um, out of, the, <laughs> of any colleges. Um, so, and 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 I think the point you make about don't stress about the college is really important, right? And people sometimes try to play, you know, tricks like, oh, this college this year had a slightly, you know, two percent chance, uh, you know, two percent more accepted applicants, or well, this college had this world, you know, world class professor. Truth is, for, at least for material science you have world-class academics pretty much at every single college. Um, and actually a lot of the tutors, because it's such a small department, are shared. So Queens, I believe, share, you know, we share tutors with Mansfield and Corpus, right? So um, um, so students from each college kind of, you know, share tutors and, and similar schemes exist at other colleges. So um, don't necessarily just kind of, you know, be pigeonholed into that, into that idea, right? Yeah. Uh, cool, okay. So you, you do an application. So there is no A level in material science, right? So how do you, what do you put in your personal statement? How do you show that interest in, in material science? Yeah, so as we said, there's no A level in that materials. Um, what you kind of have to show is, um, I think kind of two separate things, the foundation in the foundation subjects. So, you know, you've got your maths and your physics and your chemistries and that engineering, that kind of basic interest. But also then because materials is this thing that we don't know what it, you don't necessarily know what it is. I think it's showing that curiosity. You've gone out of your way to find out maybe what you think materials is, what's involved in materials, something surrounding it that really interests you that has brought you into materials. So I think showing that curiosity side for me, when I read a personal statement, that's a great thing to see. Because as material scientists, we are curious about the world around us. We say, there's an issue, how can I make that better? Or that's doing an okay job, but how can I increase the efficiency? So it's that curiosity. Mm. And would your advice be um, to kind of, because in material science, you can pick up a book, right? And, um, you know, from memory, Porter Easterling, right? Like first year, first year material science classic. Um, and, 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 you know, you read a lot of these like fancy words and, and I find a lot of applicants make the mistake of trying to impress the tutors with the with all this lingo um but actually often the, the you know they achieve the reverse have you you know have you seen this in, in your experience yeah i have seen that and doing things like that can come back to haunt you when you get to an interview if you've mentioned a kind of a material science concept that's quite high level and then a tutor might ask you say oh okay you've read about dislocations for example and then they go can you talk to me about them and you go oh God, I have no idea what they are, but I just read that fancy word in the book. It's much better off to keep it almost simple and really, really explain that simple stuff. And then say, then I can see the potential to go into the future and read about this or go on to expand my knowledge rather than going, look at all this amazing knowledge I have already. But actually it's a bit kind of fuzzy. Mm. Really hone in on the stuff that you definitely know and that shows that you're capable of expanding it in the future. No, no, that's, that's great advice. Um, and <clears throat> Niels, what, uh, what were the A-levels that, um, uh, that you did at, at school? So I did um, maths, chemistry, physics and art. And I did further maths to AS level. Uh, obviously slightly different now, not doing S ASs. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I had a balance in there of um, my more physical sciences. So maths, chemistry, physics. And then I just had art in there because it's a little bit of a design and you, you, there's some elements of it. I, I'm not going to portray material science as a, an artistic degree, but there are some elements of um, design and more sort of engineering design in there where you get a bit of freedom. Hmm, definitely. And, and, and by the way, guys, obviously, if you're doing A-levels, that's, you know, that's straightforward and, and, and all tutors will be familiar with it. But there are, there are students who come um, through with IB. There are students in my year, there was a guy from America who did um, uh, SATs and uh, AP exams and then got in with those. So um, th there is more than one qualification 
um, that will get you in. And, and, and Oxford actually has a very useful link for international applicants um, where you can check whether your qualifications work. So, um, uh, so I'll, I'll put the link in the in the description and do you know do uh, check those out. So don't be put off. You know, if you don't have A levels, it does not necessarily mean the end of the road for you. Um, so okay, and um, would you say in your personal statement should you um, you know mention those subjects and try to kind of you know do a paragraph on each or or kind of do you put it all together? Like how do you you know do you pay to your A level subjects? So in my personal statement, um, what I did is I sort of briefly mentioned my A-levels. I didn't linger on them too much. Um, what I kind of, the way I kind of tend to structure mine was to say at the beginning, a kind of broad overview of why I want to study materials, which could include bits of background of the chemistry and physics that I've learned, or just a sort of overview of why I want to study it. And then for my remaining paragraphs, I went into details giving evidence of this. So for example, um, reading a book or going to a lecture or um, doing some work experience. And it's really important that when you bring in those extracurricular things, that it's not just saying, I read this material science book and I really enjoyed it. Or I did this work experience and I really enjoyed it. It's about saying, I read this book and I learned about this specific thing. And I researched that more and found out, oh, that was actually used in X, Y, Z. Hmm. or I did my work experience and what really stood out to me was the amount of teamwork or leadership skills that were needed to be part of an engineering um, working environment hmm. because as material scientists we also are engineers it's a um, an MEng, a master's of engineering degree um, so not everything has to be specifically materials it can be in the broad sense of engineers because we are engineers yeah, and, 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 and there are some applicants who will apply for engineering to other universities with the same personal statement, right? Because there's all some for physics. And, and in fact, I think um, this has, I think my last, my year was the last year they did it or the year below me, but at Oxford, you could apply for physics and then there was an option to apply for material science as well. Did, did you have it when you applied? Yeah, we did. We had one physics, um, someone in my year for materials who originally applied for physics, but then got transferred onto the materials. Hmm. Yeah, I think I, th I think they've closed this, but this was so, almost like the, you know, the back alley way of of applying for six UCAS choices because you could have your normal five and then the sector of material science, um, on the back of that. Um, Niels, and in your experience, what what works better? Should you should you try and kind of cover, you know, all the areas because you know you read so much and everything's exciting and new, or should you maybe pick one or two areas and kind of focus on them? I would say the one or two um, works better. Um, you've only got a certain number of characters in your personal statement. So you're not gonna be able to cover all the topics that you want. Um, and I say picking one or two and really going into the depth, into depth with those, rather than just like brushing over, as we say, just mentioning this fancy word, mm -hmm. if you just drop it in, um, it's much easier to take, okay, right, I've got a whole paragraph, I'm gonna, I'm gonna um, set out this paragraph just for this one concept. And it doesn't necessarily have to be just writing an academic paragraph about a certain materials concept it can be i've read it in this book and then i've backed it up by watching this youtube video or i've done it whatever it may be but really just expanding on a single concept or a couple of concepts i think is a better way yeah no 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 definitely i agree um but okay so l let's say you know you've done your application on time 15th of october you've you know you've prepared your ucas form your teachers have wrote you a great reference uh, and by the way guys start investing in the relationship with your teacher nice and early. Don't just tell them two weeks before, oh, by the way, I'm applying to material science. And they're like, what's that? You, you know, tell them as soon as you know that this is the subject. And um, I find, you know, with our students, it's always a good idea to kind of invest in that relationship. So they're really, you know, supportive and they know of any extra reading or any extra activities that you do outside of school towards that, uh, you know, in pursuit of your uh, passion. Then you apply on 15th of October or hopefully earlier. And what happens then? So um, you have to do an extra exam for materials? 